Hey everybody, it's your pal Lizzie here, and uh, this is another effing podcast. Metal Edge Magazine's another effing podcast. I haven't done one of these intros in a while. No green screen, no belt. Okay, I have the belt. But tonight I am joined by Todd Latore of Queensryche, and we will be talking about his record called Rejoice in the Suffering, which came out on Rat Pack Records on February 5th. I highly suggest you all go buy it because it is fucking amazing. If you're a metal fan, you will love it. Oh, we get into so much great stuff. Old school 80s stuff that we love. Cruise stories. Uh, talking about our interactions with these artists that we grew up with that we now know and are friends with. And dive into the Queensryche stuff a lot. And it's very, very interesting. And then we get into the new record, obviously. Um, but the reason I wanted to do this is because at the end of the show, there will be some bonus content. During the show, we talk about an interview that I did with Queensryche right before their first gig ever as Queensryche with Todd as the singer. And I found the interview. So, at the end of the show, stay tuned afterwards because you will be able to hear the interview that I did with them. They're very, I think it was their very first interview with Todd as a lead singer of Queensryche from my Rockin' 101 days in St. Cloud, Minnesota. So, sit back, enjoy. Oh, there's so much great stuff in this. Enjoy this. It's just a couple music geeks talking about music. And that's what we love, right? It is Metal Edge Magazine's Another Fucking Podcast. Hi, this is Bobby Brown, and welcome to Another Fucking Podcast. My liver's all twisted up. But you know what I did? I loaded up with alcohol. More specifically, vodka. Whiskey. Beer. Tequila. More beer. More vodka. More whiskey. Who wants an orange whip? Orange whip? Orange whip? Three orange whips. So you're bored, are you? I've come here to break your monotony. Let me have my piece, because I'm shooting with this one, folks. I don't care, man. The unscripted, uncensored, loose cannon of commentary. Why did you say that? Why? Why? You come out with stink like that? Poop. See, son, old legends never die. They just lose weight. Like a legend and an out-of-work bum look a lot of like daddy. I've got a midget friend, an albino friend, and another friend who thinks Lord of the Rings is real. Together we call ourselves the Unfuckables. When Todd is in, let the fun begin. Todd, you touch You catch an asshole, man. <laughs> I've never heard of fan. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. Hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you, and it's always good to be seen. My name is Izzy Presley, and this is Metal Edge Magazine's Another Fucking Podcast. Good to be back one-on-one -on -one this evening. I got Todd Latore from Queensryche joining me. Uh, get to him in just one second. Paul Gargano will be back eventually. He is uh, currently um, um, uh, scheduling conflict again this week, so hopefully maybe he should be back next week. And uh, make sure you guys hit up all the social media at Real Lizzie Presley all the way across the board. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course the show page is another effing podcast. Um, and if you are listening live on the Spreaker, feel free to chime in the chat room. That will be roll. It is rolling. So anytime anybody gets in there and people can pop in and say hi. And you can also hit me on Twitter and I can answer. We can answer questions there as well at Real Izzy Presley. Uh, next week, for sure, I have Joel Hoekstra from Whitesnake coming on talking about his brand new record and working on one more guest for that. And um, I think that's all I got. Oh, yeah, I forgot. In the words of the great Stone Cold Steve Austin, got to crack one for the working man. Ah, Todd, I only went with one beer tonight, you know, wanted to keep it safe. There you go. One, one, a tall boy, one tall boy. There we go. And of course for our livers, 
a shot of the Jesse James Dupree whiskey. Ah, yes. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome. It's good to have you back. It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, good to see you again. It's good to see you. Um, uh, fuck, you've been doing a lot of promo for the for the record, and uh, which we're going to get into the second half of the show. Um, so you grew up in St. Petersburg. I didn't realize that you were younger than me. <laughs> I got you by like a year and a half. Which, yeah, I, I turned 47 in February. How, um, growing up in that area, and I know, I know um, Tampa St. Pete's like famous for having a, like a really huge like metal scene. How young did you fall into that scene? Um, well, I mean, the death, the death metal, you know, that whole scene coming up here um, with bands like Atheist, Death, Obituary, et cetera. Um, you know, I was in my early teens, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I can remember seeing like the deicide guys walking around in the mall, you know, and, uh, cause we had a music store, seminal music in this, in this mall that I used to go to. And I was like 13 and, uh, you know, it was on 98 rock. We had a station called, or a segment of that station called the pit. Mm -hmm. And that started at, I don't know, 11 or 12 or something mm -hmm. at night. And it would just be all the brutal, heavy stuff. And, uh, you know, I was never a huge, I didn't get completely immersed in the death metal scene. I was more into thrash. Yeah. But, but I still listened to, you know, I remember listening to Obituary and a little bit of Deicide and, um, you know, Death and all those bands kind of recorded out of Tampa uh, at Morris Sound Studios, which is about, I don't know, 30, 40 minute drive from here. Um, now everybody records at Mana Recording, which is Eric Rattan from Hate Eternal. He now plays guitar in Cannibal Corpse. So all those guys, um, you know, record out of there and they're like a 20 minute ride from here. So mm -hmm. It's it's still there's still a scene down here for for the death stuff and um, Tampa is always you know kind of, is kind of a good town for for more of the heavy metal stuff. Sabotage yeah. is from here. Mm -hmm. Crimson Glory is right over the Skyway Bridge from Sarasota. So you know we still we've got uh, some notable acts that have come out of this area. Did you, uh, I mean, was it a natural progression? Did you like start on like Van Halen and then the eighties, you know, the, 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 the glam rock of the eighties and like naturally progress into the heavy stuff? Correct. Yeah. I, I listened to, um, I remember the first time I heard Dawkin and it, it was probably Dream Warrior or something. It is, you know, gaddy, uh, gaddy, gaddy, And I, I never yeah. really heard that chugging on the low E, right? And right. I was like, wow, that sounds so cool. And at 13, I had purchased my first, like, good electric guitar. It, I still have it. It's a USA BC Rich crackle finish. It's nice. really pretty. Yeah, it has the fact the original DiMarzio's in it. Nice. Um, but uh, I started learning you know rhythms for Dawkin and so I was listening to Dawkin and Rat and like Mechanical Resonance from Tesla and that was like my thing um and then I there was a local uh TV station here called V32 and they played it wasn't like MTV it was like a lower budgeted local thing but they played videos and that's the first time I had seen um, testament from the new order mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, madhouse from anthrax and, um, let's see, Halloween. And, and once I heard, when I heard testament, I was like, Oh, okay. I didn't know that existed. Right. There, there's a whole, this is like way heavier and I, I'm loving this in a whole, I don't know if I would say more, but in a different way. In fact, I was doing work out in the garage today and I had uh, the whole reach for the sky uh, from rat album playing. Nice. And so lots of times, you know, I'll, I'll just put on, I still listen to back for the attack in full and mechanical resonance. And 
all that, the great radio controversy. I, so those bands are still very dear to me. Um, but once I started getting into Testament, then I started going into that direction and, and listening to Overkill, you know, like uh, in union we stand, you know, off of uh, mm -hmm. taking over. So though I really gravitated toward Overkill, Testament, Hell, not a lot of Halloween, but Halloween and and then Queensryche got on my radar uh, when Mind Crime came out. Um, and then, of course, Iron Maiden. And so I, I got into more of the thrash and then some power metal stuff. Um, and then that whole glam thing kind of took a little bit of a backseat. But the, the most notable bands from that era that I love were, were Dawkin, Rat, Tesla, um, Firehouse, you know, but they Firehouse came a little later on the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but still, you know, I still love all that stuff. And uh, but so yeah, I, it was a it was a progression from from that sound into the heavier sound. And then you know, I remember hearing like a bootleg tape of Cowboys from Hell, mm -hmm. and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> You know, it was, yeah. it was just like, God damn, it was so cool. Cause nobody was vocalizing like Phil then right now, right. everybody tries to do that. Everybody does that. Mm -hmm. And you know, he just, and, and then he also had like some high screams where he was singing like heresy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A really metal sounding shit like well, shit, was, like even like even at the, the end of the song Cowboys from Hell when he starts doing that progression thing. And oh, like, that's oh. on that. Yeah, that's on Cemetery Gates. Oh, yeah. yeah, Cemetery Gates. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, but yeah, dude. Yeah. Zay, when, when, when he had it, fuck, he was yeah, so good. It was amazing. It was so yep. like, like you know, for me personally, I mean, at, growing up, I mean, we had USA Network, so we had uh, you know, I got to watch Radio 1990, you know, back in like the early 80s, and uh, then they had a, a show called Night Flight that was on, I think, on Saturday nights, and this is like pre high school, so I'm like. I'm at home every fucking weekend because I was a dork and I didn't have friends that went out and did stuff or were able to go out and do stuff at night. Um, but I mean, I remember fucking seeing Motorhead, uh, Ace of Spades. I'm just like, yeah. I didn't understand it. I mean, I was so young. I'm like, I, I don't. Yeah. This, it, this guy's ugly as fuck. What is what is this? You know, and it didn't it didn't really hit me until later. I mean, I think for me what it was was the monsters of rock tour which was my first like big boy show Me van too. halen scorpions dark and metallica kingdom come yeah. and a lot of people aren't might not know this but i mean that was right before justice came out like yeah. it ended like a month before justice came out and that's what put metallica on my radar yeah and i want I, I remember watching that show i'm just like what the like exactly like you said what the fuck is this you know yeah yeah, yeah totally the uh and and one of my favorite, you know, my two favorite bands on that tour were Kingdom Come and Dawkin. And nothing against, you know, the Scorpions and Van Halen, right. but but I mean, I loved that first Kingdom Come. I still oh. listen to it. You know, I hear God and g g gown. Dang. Yep. It's it's yep. like so good so that that love that record and then of course Dawkin, but that was my first i went with my sister used to date this guy named shane and he was uh i really admired him and looked up to him he was uh well my sister's a few years older than me so when i was a freshman uh she was they were seniors mm -hmm. and he he had you know the cool chrome uh you know pearl kit was it a pearl kit I think it was a pearl kit. It was all chrome. Like, I think the guy from White Lion had a chrome kit. That mm -hmm. was a thing back then with the yeah, big Tom. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, and, and I would go over to his house, and he kind of took me in like a little brother. I remember he came over, and my drums, like, I had one Tom here and, like, one Tom here. And, like, I didn't know how to set him up, like, the cool way. Yeah. And he was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? We got to get this all right. And so he – and then I started – you know, he would teach me things. And uh, anyway, I remember going to the, was that 89? That was 89. 88, summer of 88. Summer 88. 88. Okay. So I was 14 and it was like a 13 hour thing. 
And, nine. It was nine. And, nine. Okay. Well, nine hours. Started at one, ended at ten. Okay. Well, we were there for thirteen <laughs> hours. Of course. <laughs> but dude, it was it was fucking light. It was life changing. Yeah. And what's what's nuts is is I know everybody in those bands except for Van Halen. I've met Michael Anthony once. I don't know anybody else in the band, but obviously we've toured with the Scorpions. Yeah. And I, know, I know all those guys. And so it's like, and Doc, and I mean, I called Don, I don't know, a couple of months ago just to say hi, see how he's doing. And and it's like, holy fuck, like these were like my idols. And yeah, you know, it's 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 amazing. But um, that was the first like real massive like rock show that was like this is what i want to do mm -hmm. yeah i fuck i remember my my mom waited in line to get our tickets for us you know because i mean I, it was the summer between my freshman and sophomore year so it was i think it was a freshman when they went on sale because we went on sale during the school year and my mom went she had the credit card so she yeah. went to the fucking record store and waited in line for us. You know, it's like, yeah. and I, I remember our tickets were $25 for main floor. $25. I think I still have, um, I have like some old stuff from back then. And uh, I, I think I have that ticket stub. From nice. The I got to look for it. Now that we're talking about it, I'm going to have to make a point to look for that. But uh, I mean, well, look, that was pre-internet. Yeah. You know, we had, I don't know if you guys had like Specs music or Turtles or, you know, it was a chain. We had Peaches music. Well, anyway, the big chain music stores, that's where you would, you could go get tickets mm -hmm. there. Yep. Um, it was a whole thing, mm -hmm. right? It was like, you stood in line and you waited and it was this build up, and, and, you know, I can remember walking into tampa stadium and just being like fuck this is so that feeling that pre-show yep. feeling and you see all all the chicks are all dressed up back in the 80s the way that they dressed and all the all the guys had you know the short bangs and the long hair and oh yeah you know i i mean i just i grew that was our era and i just love that so much and and then when they would play, you know, the house music, like back in black, mm -hmm. you know, that's always like a good house music before the show starts. And you're just people. And I, I, you know, I would always bring binoculars because I want to, I want to look at the drum set, the configuration. I want to, I want to zoom in and look at, and you didn't have cell phones. Mm -hmm. dude. That was when people really just, embrace the show i mean we play so many shows and, and you and you know and it's really it sucks when you're standing and someone's viewing you through their screen they're not even looking at you with their eyes they're looking right, at right it's like god damn it put the fucking phone away and just embrace this moment you know it's like mm -hmm. i miss i miss those days where I remember my sister and I saw the first, the very first Brian Adams tour. We oh, were wow. kids, right? I mean, I saw the first Cindy Lauper tour. Uh, Brian, I saw Purple Rain. Oh original, shit! The original Purple. Wow. I saw, dude. I saw Lover. Check this out. I saw Lover Boy in '83, <laughs> and my dad and stepmom dropped my sister and I off at Bayfront center like they just left us alone at this wow point. like that shit would never fly no. now and people are smoking weed and i was like oh my god like this is you know it was kind of scary at nine mm -hmm. but i walked in and i loved lover boy and we watched the so my first like real concert was lover boy at nine years old and then they picked us up after the concert but my sister and i we were just the two of us in this massive, you know, like arena type show. And, um, and uh, fuck, there was, oh, I know what I was gonna say. So we saw Brian Adams and as we were leaving, the tour bus was backed up and, and, and he went into the bus and then he opened, there was a slider window, he opened, he stuck his head out and he was like waving. We were kids and we were like, yeah. oh my God, this is so, like you caught a glimpse of him closer. Now, everybody's like, 
Todd's a fucking dick. He didn't stop and talk to me when he was, you know, going to the bus. And it's like, dude, I, I, I got to eat. I got to clean up. I got to go to bed. Like, I try to be as accommodating to everybody. But, right. God, I mean, the sense of, of, of like, you owe me because I came to see your show. It's like, I miss the days of mystery. Yeah, you know, right. That mystique where it's like, if you caught a glimpse of them, that was like, that was kind of a cool thing. You know, and now it's just like, I don't know, man, it's, it's like this free for all. And, uh, there is a, there is a niceness to connect with people like on the right. boat, you know, yeah, play. yeah, yeah. but, but I still miss, you know, I don't post every two seconds on social media, you know, about everything. Like I want to, I want to be a little bit more not accessible mm -hmm. and, uh, and I miss those days, but you know, all those bands back then, all of them played arenas. I mean, Quiet yeah. Riot, they, they all sold out arenas. Big, these were big shows. I remember seeing Queensryche sell out Bayfront. I saw Rat on the Detonator tour sell that place out. Um, you know, everybody, right? It was like you saw them in the clubs in LA and before they were like explosive. Then MTV throws a video out, they're fucking yep. massive. And then now they're playing arenas. Now, guess what? What goes up must come down. And all those bands are playing clubs again, including yeah. the band I'm in. And, it, and it's no um, testimony to, 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 it's just a changing of the times. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, and I like the, the intimacy of a club gig. They're mm -hmm. fun. But boy, when you play in an arena, uh, it, it just reminds me of my youth. You know, I mean, I, I grew up in, you know, Minnesota, and because I, 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 I know I told you about this last time, but it, I introed you the night that was your very first gig as Queensrÿche. Oh, you did? That was the halfway jam, and that I sang, halfway I sang jam. like I sang like shit. Oh, dude, get the fuck out of here! I was floored. It no, was I, I cringe, I cringe at that. <laughs> but I mean, like, so I and I went to par parochial school, and we had this thing. Um, um, it was like all the all the grade schools fed into the high school, which was cathedral. And there was like other there was like public high school school. But I went to the, the Catholic school and we had this fundraiser every year because it was a Catholic private school called Rock Around the Clock. And it was put on by Bobby V because he sent his kids to cathedral, yada, yada, yada. And you remember Bobby V, you know, take good care of my baby from the like that. Yeah. You, if you heard it, you know it. Oh, he's hmm. the guy that. Uh, the night that Buddy Holly died, he filled in for him. Wow. And that's how he got his break. Mm. Um, so we, the thing it was called Rock Around the Clock, and it was all 50s and 60s acts that came in and mm. that Bobby got to do this. And I mean, shit, I it was 85 or 86. I got actually, I have the shirt right here because I found it last time I went home. Wow. Uh, Chubby Checker was playing and Chubby pulled me on stage and I did the twist with Chubby Checker. No I mean, shit. that was that was my first taste, you know. Wow. Um, but I've never had that ex the closest I've ever had the experience of like playing like an arena, which never ha has never happened, but like on the Monsters of Rock cruise one year, um, it was the halftime show of the Super Bowl. They had uh uh the residency, rock and roll residency playing, and they brought me up on the pool. I stage. remember that. That yeah. was out at the pool. Yeah, and I did I did Dr. Love with them. And it's like, that's I, I like, remember that, because then Slaughter played after you. Yeah, absolutely. Do, do you, I mean, like you're talking about how you loved all those bands growing up. And now, you know, like we, we both know of them. Know them. Um, but like even me as this kid from central Minnesota, I still geek out a little bit knowing that I'm friends with these guys. And I still fanboy a little bit inside too. Do you still get that feeling? Um, it depends. I mean, usually when I see that, you know, if I see any of those guys, it, it's more like me and you talking right now, right? Same yeah. thing. You like, hey, what's up, dude? There, but there are those moments where, okay, so I can remember slaughter came and i think sebastian bach was playing my sister wanted to go here it mm -hmm. was like 10 minutes down the road and she's like hey um you know the slaughter's playing and this is playing and that's playing you know can we go and i happened to be home and i was like i was like yeah she's like 
you know, can we get tickets? And I said, yeah, don't worry. You know, so I, I called Mark Slaughter and I, was like, <laughs> I said, hey, dude, you're playing. I said, you're playing right, right down the street from my house. Um, you know, any chance you could leave me plus one? I, my sister wants to come. And he had met her before because, okay. And um, he said, yeah, no problem. So we, he had his TM meet me at the back entrance and gave me the credentials. I parked my car and then we went on their coach and hung out and she was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And, you know, and then he played, they played their show and I've been in the market for a 12 string. And he breaks out this 12 string. And I was like, wow, I really like that. So after I go, hey, I said, uh, or no, I said to his tech, I go, hey, what kind of, what is that 12 string? He's like, oh, it's a goat and kind of a thin body, electric, yeah. really cool. And I was like, I, I want to look at that when, when, you know, when you guys are done. So Mark got off stage and I said, hey, dude, can you show me your 12 string? He's like, yeah. So he takes it and we go back to, he carries it back to the thing and he's playing it. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm in the market for one of those. Um, maybe you can point me in the right direction, like for this, cause I really like this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and dude, he goes, you can have it. And he just played it on stage <laughs> and he goes, Christ. I go, what? He goes, you, I'll, I'm going to give it to you. I go, are you serious? He's like, yeah. I was like, wow dude like i'll pay you for it like you know he just gave me his 12 string and and you know so after the fact i'm like okay i used to watch headbangers ball and mtv and fly to the angels and up all night and now i'm calling mark slaughter he's he's hooking me up with passes and then i'm watching side stage and then he gives me the 12 string he just got done playing on stage and actually that guitar is on my record. Um, oh, that's amazing. And I was like, so there are moments like that where, and then Sebastian played and I'm side stage and he's like, come on, come on. And I was like, what? You and fucking he, get up here right now. Sorry. <laughs> that's a good impression. <laughs> Thank you. And so that's a good impression, impersonation. So he, he drags me out. I mean, I'm wearing, you know, fucking flannel shirt and a hat yeah. and I'm just hanging with my sister and I go out and sing Youth Gone Wild with them. And, you know, so there are those moments where you're like, wow, like I, I, this is, this is real. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, so there are, I don't fanboy out, but I'm, but there are moments where I'm like, wow, I can't, I can't believe this is my life. All right, dude, I, fuck, I mean, I'm just, I'm a karaoke host <laughs> on the boat. I mean, I, but it's the fact that I know that I can text Kip Winger. <laughs> it just, right. it geeks me out a little bit. I mean, the fact, the fact that I'm talking to you, it, it still, it still geeks me out a little yeah, bit. But you, know, you know, but I'm not, I'm not the guy you grew I, up watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I'm not going to lie to you. I became a bigger Queensbury fan after watching you with them because I, there was something Thank about you. Jeff I just didn't like. I mean, amazing voice. It just it was something that I always rubbed me the wrong way. But that was, yeah. and I've never met the guy. It's just yeah. you, you know, you look at somebody, you're like, ah. Anyways, uh, first half of the show brought to you by Beater Amplification. That's two e's. Beateramplification.com. Oh my God, hand wired, hand built, 100 watts of testicular fortitude. Three channels. Get that old school Metallica tone, old school Kiss ACDC tone, and that old school Fender tone. Hand wired, hand built. These things are fucking amazing. Hit them up on Facebook and check out the website, beateramplification.com. That's two E's. And you can actually order the uh, Izzy Presley TCB1, my uh, signature model, believe it or not. And that is not it behind me. I don't even have one yet. And our good friends over at Mackey, you want to get into podcasting and home recording, hit up Mackey, M-A-C-K-I-E. Uh, hit up that studio bundle. Very affordable way to do it. They give you everything that you need, and uh, it's good to go. Mackie.com. Um, are, are you going to be able – is it cool if we go longer than I thought yeah. we were going to go? Because yeah, I mean, yeah, we're yeah. already half an hour in, and we're just got all this cool shit going on. Dude, I don't, I don't have a job. Let's do this. <laughs> Fuck A, <laughs> man. I love it. I love it. It is the uh, – if you happen to just be joining us, it is the Metal Edge magazine, and that geeks me out at the same time. 
fact that I can say this is the Metal Edge magazine, <laughs> another effing podcast um, with Todd Latore from Queensryche. We're going to talk about his new record, which is called Rejoice in the Suffering. Came out February 5th on Rat Pack Records. Get into that in the second half of the show. Um, when you, like I said, when you, you, you talk about Queensryche a little bit in, in the beginning, um, did, do you remember that, like, the first time you heard them and uh, did, did they resonate with you? Did, they, did it sit with you like, oh, fuck, this is really good? Yeah. So, so going back to my friend, Shane, he handed me, he's like, dude, you got to check this band out. And I was like, I was like, okay. And he hands me the cassette and it's operation mind crime. I'm like, okay. So I put it in my, it was like halfway in the tape or something. Mm -hmm. So I put it in, it was in the middle of a song and it had the auto when you had auto search and it could, okay. yep. so I hit like, fast forward to get to the next track and it went to the end and I was like god damn it so I flipped it over and then played and there was like this intro thing and I was like okay let me just get to the song and I you know fast forward and it went to the end of the thing because they have the, all these songs that intertwined right yeah and I guess on that tape it just didn't know how to it find the indexing or whatever yeah but nevertheless I listened to it I, I finally got irritated said, okay, I'm going to listen to this from beginning to end. And I laid on my bed and I put my headphones on and I just laid back and I listened to it and it didn't, I liked it, but it didn't just nail me right out of the gate. I uh -huh. had to digest it. And then I started, I loved, I mean, he, I think this is when eyes of a stranger video kind of came uh -huh. out. And, but when I heard, you know, eyes of a strange stranger, that vibrato, because yeah. I was a big Iron Maiden fan. So Bruce Dickinson's vibe, that heavy vibrato. And I was like, wow, this guy's voice is fucking amazing. And these songs are killer. And it wasn't crunchy guitars. And I, I was digging more of the heavy guitar sound, but these were just amazing songs. And, and I was a drummer. So you know, I really enjoyed uh, try learning the drum parts and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, and then once I really started digging that, I remember going to the music store, going to the Q section, and there was Queensryche, and all they had available was the warning in a CD. Mm -hmm. So I bought the warning CD, <clears throat> and then I brought it home, and I played that. And then I remember turning 16, and got my car and that I had the tape deck taken out and a CD player put in and that CD lived in my car for probably six solid months. I never wow. took it out. Wow. Never took, I never took it out. I know every nook and cranny of that thing. And, and then I was learning, you know, was learning the drums. Sorry, I took it out and brought, put it inside and I played <laughs> so drums, the drums and I would put it back in the car and I was trying to learn the drum parts. Um, but then I became a massive, that's my favorite Queensryche record, The Warning, Over Mind Crime. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I started going backwards and, and digging that. And then when Empire came out, I mean, the, 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 the sonic sweetness and fidelity of that record was unlike anything anybody put out mm -hmm. and uh a lot of car stereos i remember it uh, back then in my vet i had you know four four tens and you know all the amps oh, yeah. like oh, it was, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah all that stuff and so you know hearing songs like della brown off of empire it's a do 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 stack it do you had all these frequencies then the the yeah. swelling the you had all the the frequencies happening and that was a cd that a lot of stereo shops tested sound systems with in, in car audio because it, it just had everything and even had like some some low sub drop almost frequencies um and so i loved that record but I always liked the heavier stuff from Queens, yeah. right? That they did in the earlier days. Um, so yeah, Queens, I became a, a really big Queens, right? Fan. I played in, in bands and we covered um, eyes of a stranger. We covered, I don't believe in love. I, I was a drummer. Um, yeah. And so they were, yeah, I was a big fan, but I only saw them when they were really huge. I saw them one time 
And then I had seen them on their 30th anniversary tour. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Angie, who sings in a, ba a local band here, had an extra ticket. And she asked if I wanted to go. So I went. And uh, that's, but I've only seen them really two times, one time in, in the heyday. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So in fact, I, I was going to see the Seventh Sun tour and, and what was that, 91 or two? And then they canceled Iron Maiden. They canceled that Seventh Sun. Oh, Sun. that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That was like my, oh, that's my favorite Maiden record. It's one of my all time favorite records ever. And really? I never, and I and I never uh, got to see. I saw them once years ago when they when they came. You know, it was probably mm -hmm. probably seven years ago, eight years or something like that. They came through, and uh, and I did get to see Iron Maiden once. But yeah, I was a big Queensrÿche fan, so I totally get. You know, when I joined the band, like, hey, this is what I miss as a fan of your band, and I think this is what your audience misses. I think mm -hmm. this is really, you know, kind of the direction that you want to get those fans that dropped off. And I was one of them, mm -hmm. but you know, this is just my opinion. Right, you know? right, right. And, uh, and so far, you know, it's been, it's been good. And uh, this July, I'll have been in the band nine years and, <laughs> and we're, and we're right, we're writing the fourth record I I'll be on with them. So it's, it's, it's all good. You know, the first time I saw Queensryche was um, I, I went to see him on the Empire tour. I didn't go when Metallica was on the Justice tour and they were opening for, for Metallica. I missed yeah. that tour. Uh, but I went to see him on uh, on um, on uh, Empire and I only went to see Suicidal Tendencies. Okay, that's the tour I saw. That's yeah. the tour that I saw. But they played Mind Crime stuff too. They did. But, well, they did Mind Crime front to back. Oh, okay. And I, I think it was it was like the night before, or the night after, when they filmed that show in Milwaukee with yeah. Pamela. And oh, they, okay. When they did, and that's what they released as as the video. Oh, the Operation Live Crime or something. Yeah. Um. Oh shit! I got to get to the chat room. Sorry, guys. I've been falling behind on you do guys. It, do it. Uh, uh, Lori, the killer koala is here, and he's got kidney stones right now. So that sucks. Uh, Jacobus, go fuck yourself um lori back to my do i have any friends now thanks thanks lori that's awesome um uh bruce says can definitely hear the heavy influence in one by one great song heavy oh yeah he's canadian so we got to play this for him all right what else we got scotty checking in uh yeah he already answered the fanboy story i didn't even have to do that uh benjamin laird todd thank you for being so you and so authentic love it uh, what else do we got here? There is uh, blah blah blah. I think there was a gal that uh, Sabrina Higgins. Hey, Todd and Izzy, welcome, Sabrina. I, I, I know Benjamin and Sabrina, so hello to both of them. Uh, Shane Woodrum, Todd is a I know Shane. I bought I, one of my Jackson Kelly's, I bought from Shane. Nice, nice. He says he loves the sound effects. I hope it's for the show. Uh, let's see. Oh, Shane says, uh, ask him about con uh, correcting Scott on how to play Queensryche songs. I plead the fifth. I'm not. <laughs> what, when did you originally get on their radar? You mean, how did they learn about me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I met Michael Wilton at NAM. 2011 so that's what no when is when is nam november january oh it's january january okay. yeah yeah january okay so i met him uh at a seymour duncan uh artist dinner party and um and then we were just talking about side music i said yeah you know i sing in a band called crimson glory actually crimson glory opened for you on the mind crime tour before yada yada right um he goes hey can you can you sing like chris cornell and i was like i mean kind of i can kind of mimic some of that but and he was we talked about doing some side music so that was january i came home from nam and two days later i had four songs in my inbox because we ch ch exchanged info yeah and i was talking you know as i to get drummer or maybe sing something it was like tv for tv stuff but this this was music that was like these were songs. This wasn't mm -hmm. like 
you know, and he's going for the touchdown. It wasn't right, like right. that kind of music. Yeah. Um, and I listened to it. And I was like, holy shit, this sounds like Queens rank music. And so I ended up singing, uh, like writing my own lyrics and melodies to one of them. That song became a, a song called don't look back on the first record I did with them. But nevertheless, uh, he said, I, I've listened to you on YouTube of stuff you did with Crimson Glory on tour. And he said, you remind me of a young Tate and Bruce Dickinson. And I was like, well, shit, I'll take that. <laughs> right. And so, so Queensryche only had, I think, a, a few or a handful of shows on the books. And, and Jeff at the time was promoting a solo album. So they were kind of dead in the water after that. And he says what if we do a side project we'll call it something else and it would be the guys in the band but you would be singing and we can do like some old school queens stuff that we don't kind of do and i was like plus the hits and i was like yeah wow holy crap so he ended up show i did so few recordings and then i he showed uh those recordings to the guys i mean and uh they were like wow you know, and so I met them in person. Uh, a couple months later, we did a thing called Rising West. It was only two shows sold out at the Hard Rock in Seattle. And uh, that's how they met. That's how they heard of me was sometime, you know, in January of no, no, no. I can't be right, dude. I can't. I don't think it's January. Because like six months later, I was in the band. Yeah, yeah. I think it was November, December. I think I think it was like in November, December. It's whenever that winter Nam was in, at Anaheim. Okay. But nevertheless, you know what? Maybe you're right. If it is January, then then I remember like in July. I I I didn't know there was like turmoil in the band. Yeah. And shit hit the fan. They fired him and was like, you're in. And I was like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so yeah, it was, it was right at Nam, like a, like probably a week after Nam is, is when he kind of mentioned me to, to the guys in the band. And yeah, nine you know, years it, later. It, it's weird that you talk about that because um, that, I mean, that got announced pretty much because Queensryche was booked to do Halfway Jam and it was always, booked as as jeff mm -hmm. and then the turmoil happened everybody's like right. are, are they gonna play mm -hmm. what's gonna happen and mm -hmm. it, the, the whole thing was like yeah it's, it's gonna happen they're gonna play they're gonna play and then all of a sudden jeff's fired it's done and then yeah. you guys got the name but i don't think that the legal th shit happened until after after actually, no. yeah was it was it after I actually, I think you guys. It, it was. I, it was. I think it was after because that whole legal thing was pretty drawn out for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And but, uh, yeah. But because before before that show, you were only doing shows as the the cover version of it with with the guys. Yeah, Rising West. There was only Rising two West. gigs. Yeah, we only yeah. did two. And yeah. they it was announced that, I mean, it was it was I think it was like a week before the show that you know that you know this is the new singer lot top of tory and well fucking guess who did that interview with the whole band and you this guy from rock and 101 that's nuts and I, I i gotta dig that interview up i know i have it um and yeah. I'll, send it, I'll send it to you if you i can i would it. love to hear that yeah um but i remember uh at the end of the interview I was like what do you guys want me to play and they go spreading the disease I can't remember who the fuck. I'm probably you probably fucking said it. it's like, dude, spreading the disease. And yeah, there we go. So I said I, I played a song that said fuck on the air. Thanks. Wow. I appreciate that. That's awesome. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. But um how long did it take you to get comfortable as the new lead singer of Queensryche? In in what capacity? I mean, in, I mean, in general, I mean it, how long did it take you to get comfortable? I mean, because I mean, those are big shoes to fill. 
I mean, it's fucking Jeff Tate we're talking about. I, I, you know, when I when I was in Crimson Glory, the original singer named Midnight, he passed mm -hmm. away. And although it's different when a singer dies, um, do you let the band die too? Or do you bring someone in like Sanctuary with Warl Dane? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think people are a little more accepting when it's like, okay, that guy it's tragic. He passed away. And can, can someone still embrace the essence of that? And, and, yeah. you know, you carry it on with that kind of a spirit when the guy's still alive and there's like turmoil and it's like not pretty. Um, now you're, you're splitting fan base. You know, people are picking sides and, you know, I've got a bullseye on my back or in my front and my throat and, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, and so, um, it didn't take me long, dude. It, it, it was just like, you know what, I'm just going to do what I do and it'll stand on its own merit. And, and I remember saying, they were like, you know, do you want us to tune down? I was like, hell no. I said, we're not tuning down, dude. We, we are, we're going to play like the songs really go. Right. And, right. and we still do that, you know, and Wait, 40, hold on, hold on. Were they tuning down before you came in? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. a half a step, sometimes even a whole step. Yeah. So, you know, which is okay. I mean, that's okay. Look, that's okay. Totally but okay. that's okay. But I was like, I, I can do this. We're going to play in the standard tuning. And if I have trouble, let me work on it and come up to you. Don't <laughs> wow. you come down to me. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. And so, so, um, you know, and, 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 and really going for those notes that Jeff wasn't going for. Mm -hmm. And, and I think people were like, damn, he's hitting those notes and we, that's what we miss. And, and also you, you were, you were commenting. I mean, I don't, I don't want to like throw sound bites out that are going to be. No, no, that's not what but, I meant. That's not what no, I, I, I know. I, I know you're not, but, but we know who, yeah. you know, there are yeah. people that do that. Yeah. But my yeah, point, yeah. but my point is um, when that worked to my advantage to be able to, to sing in the register, but I understand what you're talking about, about the, the theatrics and the movement. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, I, I liked that presence that he had, but, but there's a, another part of me that made me feel as a viewer that it wasn't, that it was like they were the backing band to this one person. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you know, and, and I always want the band to be, I want the visual to be like, we're all equal together. Right. And I want, I don't want to try to overshadow anybody in the band. Like I joined your band and I'm, I'm here as a team player and nothing I do is, is contrived. Um, I like theatrics, but they have to be genuine from my soul. Right. I'm not going to repeat movements that are like an actor that you see happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just a fucking headbanger, dude. And yes. some people, some people don't like it and some people do like it. And mm -hmm. I'm just me, but I, I, it didn't take me long. I mean, I remember the first tour we ever did, I got a really bad sinus infection and like, I started singing like crap that first night. And then the, the second show was canceled. And I was like, oh my God, I just got in the band. And now the band's probably looking at me like, did we make the right choice? And I was that really, I mean, I was almost crying in my in my hotel room. That kind of pressure. Yeah. It was, it it was, I want to make the band proud. Yeah. First. Okay. After I had maybe a dozen shows under my belt, I was like, okay. I, I'm, I can handle this and I'm always going to be compared. I'm, I'm never going to be the original guy, but you know what? The last three records that we've done with me and the band blow away 
in my opinion, everything post promised land bar none. And the, and the people know it mm -hmm. and you can hear that Queens Reich sound again. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I do try to sing those old songs in that spirit. I do. Yeah. yeah I do a few things my way, but, but I, I really do try to honor that. I have so much respect for the vocals of what Jeff did back then. Um, and uh, I don't get nervous about that anymore. I mean, people, some people will come up to me after a show and they'll be like, hey, dude, I owe you an apology. And I'll be like, what do you mean? They'll say, I came here to prove to my to 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 know that that you were not that good and i have to be honest that show blew me away and i'm like listen man all i all that we really kind of ask is just give it an honest chance without yeah. your biases just give it an honest listen if you think i suck as a singer after you really listen then you have that right yeah. But to just slam me because I'm not that guy. Yeah. I mean, if you took if you took vocals from the original recordings and pumped it through the PA and I lip synced it and it was it was the real recordings from back then, they would say I still sucked. Right. And you know, because I'm right. just not that guy. Yeah. But uh, I have good nights and I have bad nights, and uh, you know, now it's like, but it, it I would say it took me a good dozen maybe 20 song uh, 20 shows at the most mm -hmm. and then i was like all right I i'm starting to settle in a little bit better the feedback has been quite positive i know i did a good job i know i have to improve here i know i struggled there my tone is weird here let me work on these things and it becomes muscle memory yeah and uh and so that's kind of I look, I'm my worst critic. So anybody saying, Everybody. oh, that guy fucking sucks. I, you know, I know where I need to improve. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but, it, but it is, it's a, it's a delicate balance between being a human being and people just bagging the shit out of oh, you for, for, for oh, decades. And especially now because of the internet, everybody has a fucking voice. But I'm going to put this in a, in a very good perspective too. It's like, you look at what Queen is doing with um, 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 Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert. He's not Freddie Mercury. And he knows he's not Freddie Mercury. He doesn't try to be Freddie Mercury. Yes, yeah. he's gay. Yes, he's flamboyant. But he's not trying to be Freddie. But he sings those songs very well. And I think that's a, a, a like it's just like what you're trying to do. Well, yeah. And you know, the interesting thing is um, <laughs> some people will say, like when I put my record out, some people will say, aha, that's what he sings like. And it's like, yeah, but I got 10 different voices on this record. Right, I just right. sing whatever the music makes me feel like. So I'm sorry, I'm not a one trick pony. I can sing different things with different textures, right? So people say, oh, he's he's trying to sound like that in Queensryche. And my, my reply to that would be, well, number one, the music sounds like Queensryche because it is. And so I'm going to sing it like that. Right. N number two, um, you know, if I didn't sound like it, they would say, he doesn't sound anything like it. If I sound so much like it, now I'm a copycat. So I can't win either, either way. I don't give a fuck. Right. I just I just sing it the way that it should be sung. And right, that's, right. Just, that's just it. But on the new stuff, you know, you have the that common thread in those tonalities and those things because mm -hmm. physically, I just have a makeup of my bone structure and my face and my voice and everything else to be able to to sound like that right 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 and actually that's actually what i was going to ask you about i mean right before we go to break so we can come back and talk about the new record which is why we're here but i still love i mean no, I, this is I all good these stories um i mean so going like the last three records that you did with queens rake um i mean is is that mentality there it's like well i i have to sing like this because it's queens rake i mean look th there's a part of that for sure 
because if I if I sing like uh, Rob Halford, it just it's not appropriate. Right. You know, there there is a sound that needs to be present in Queens Rikes music. And, um, you know, a band, a band like like Anthrax could get away with it where John Bush comes in. He doesn't sound anything like Belladonna and it just worked. But I think that Queensryche was so had such a, a an identifiable vocal sound that man, if you if you go so far away from that, I just don't see that maintaining that 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 sound. And so, but again, all all of those all the little that's Craig calling me all of those um those little crying inflections like that stuff I do like on the song vexed mm -hmm. on my record the intro is exactly how I would approach a Queensryche song mm -hmm. and so that acoustic guitar that Craig plays that made me feel in that headspace so I give that kind of delivery um but with my record what I what I wanted to do was nothing like Queensryche I didn't right. Why would I try to do that? That's a exactly. waste. I, well, let's, I mean, actually, I wanted to ask this too. Um, yeah. How did you, how did you approach the drums then on that last Queens record? Cause you played the drums on the last Queens record right. because Scott's not there. Scott's gone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just said, well, I did all the demos anyway. Mm -hmm. And I did a ton of the demos on condition human too. Um, you know, when we were writing them. And so when it came time to do that, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to drum. Like I'm going to put thing. I, I'm going to do what I think sounds like a Queens right drum part, you know, whether it's the hi hat work or the, 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 the double chinas and some of the fills, you know, the, the drum work that you hear on, on my record is not the footwork and all that is not right. what you hear. Cause it's just not, it's a different exactly. animal. Exactly. But I mean, obviously, I would say, okay, there's only one Scott Rockenfield. The guy thinks extremely creatively, mm -hmm. and and it's, you know, I'm not him, but right. I know that I have the skills to execute the Queen's Rike material. How do I write drum parts that make sense, that complement the music without walking all over everything? I'm going to do a few fills that are mine that he would never do, right. but... I think that uh, overall, most people really liked the drumming and uh, it sounds appropriate. But yes, I did. I do. I did have to get into that headspace and say, you know, what would what would sound like something Scott might play here? Right. Right. And I think that's just that's just respecting the style and sound and feel of what Queensryche, in my opinion, ought to be. I, one more question before we go to break. This is from That's Bruce cool. in Canada. He goes, uh, do you think your story is similar to Ripper's? Um, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that we both got to sing for a, a big band. Um, no, in the sense that I was never in a Queensryche tribute band, and I never sang in a band until I joined Crimson Glory in 2010. I was a drummer mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, and so in that aspect, uh, I would say it's, it's very different, but certainly, you know, I sing for Queensryche. He ended up singing for Judas Priest, which is fucking massive. Right. Um, you know, parallels for sure, but different in the sense that I was never trying to be the singer of Queensryche. I right. didn't sing in it. You know, it just happened. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Uh, let's go to break. Come back in two minutes and two seconds. Uh, got Todd Latore from Queensryche, and we are going to be talking about his brand new solo record, which came out on February 5th called Rejoice in the Suffering. It's on Rat Pack Records. I just actually ordered the cassette yesterday. I wasn't bullshitting when I said that. I'm fucking stoked. I, this is how weird it was yesterday. So I ordered your cassette, then I emailed you. Um, and then I had to learn a song last night. So I took my phone, connected it to my stereo, recorded a song on cassette that I have to learn for Wednesday and learn the song playing it on cassette. 
Wow, old school. <laughs> Fucking old school. Then, oh shit, I'm going to show you this too. This showed up in the mail today. This is from a friend. Uh, her name is uh, Taylor. And I I just posted this. This is fucking great. 24 fucking cassettes. And oh god, there they are. This is this is what showed up in the fucking mail today. <laughs> you got that? Yes. Dude, uh, those are great. What's the first one? What is the hold on? What's the one next to Lover Boy on the uh, left? Lo oh, that cheap is, trick. It's cheap trick. Fuck okay, yes, DNR, Warrant. Here, let me get out of Oh, Steel Heart, Journey, Pink Floyd. Yeah, Firehouse, Rad Ozzy, Van yeah. Halen, Van Halen. Poison, yeah. Quiet Riot, Def Leppard, The great. Lost Boys soundtrack. Fuck yeah. All right, anyways, so let's do this. We'll, uh, we'll go to break. We'll be right back with Todd Latori. It is another fucking podcast, Metal Edge Magazines. Another fucking podcast. Our Vinny Tortorich here. Hey man, if you're a fan of Izzy, you might be a fan of me too. I'm the guy that gets people to lose a lot of weight. I have something free for you guys. This is no clickbait. Just go to VinnyTortorich.com and there's a big banner. It's a free PDF, How to Lose Weight. It's an intro guide to NSNG at VinnyTortorich.com. Go check it out exclusively for anyone who listens to Izzy Presley. Thank you. RockstarLeatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out RockstarLeatherworks.com. Hey ladies, Sass Pants Designs will take that band shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, halter tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsrocks.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for special offers and custom orders. Use the code IZZY25 for 25% off of your entire order at sasspantsrocks.com. That's sasspantsrocks.com. Let Sass Pants make you the envy of the party. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level. With their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo. T-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads from the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. A reading from the book of Gene. Chapter, Lick It Up. Verse, Fits Like a Glove. Ain't a cardinal sin. Baby, let me in. Girl, I'm gonna treat you right. Well, goodness sakes, my snake's alive and it's ready to bite. Praise be to Gene. Oh. <laughs> it just never gets old. Oh, thank you, Mike Dawson from Adam Carolla. Oh, speaking of that, um, uh, not Mike, but uh, I will be in Nashville this summer in August for the Rock and Pod Expo representing not only this show, but the Monsters of Rock Cruise. So uh, very, very excited about that. Second half of the show brought to you by AMP Laser. Hit them up, amplaser.com. Uh, you need something laser engraved, something special. Because, you know, we got graduations coming up, even though nobody went to school this year. Um, and uh, Mother's Day is coming up. We got fucking Father's Day. Anything. Hit them up, amplaser.com. And Oz from AP Laser is almost recovered he had a stroke he is doing much much better um and he's my age which is really kind of scary but uh shout out to oz feel better buddy and then uh once he's back rolling we can get these fucking roadie packs rolling again that have the tumbler they have the flask they have the zippo type lighter and the dog tag 
all that says another effing podcast on it and you can have them personalized because hey it's fucking laser engraving baby they can do whatever they want and our good friend john palumbo john palumbo design.com you have a band you have a business you need a website done you need a logo hit up our good friend john palumbo john palumbo design.com another tampa guy do you know john i don't know john you don't oh you should know john palumbo you would love john palumbo he used to be the uh, artist rep for dean Okay. Um, and he, he's a Tampa guy and he, he, I think he's playing a bunch of shows like acoustic shows around. You would love him. Super fucking nice guy. I, I ever meet him. To, I go to the factory there cause I'm a, I'm a, uh, endorsed by D drum and they're out of the same building. Gotcha. So I'll go back and look at, look at the guys that are building the new Dean guitars and stuff. But I, I mean, I might've met him, but I can't say that I know him. If you ever we met a, him, we got, he... a few, we got a few locals like, uh, Troy, uh, from Mastodon, the bassist, he lives on Indian Rock Beach. We've got um, the singer for Municipal Waste. He lives in Semi, like not far from here. So mm -hmm. we got a few guys in this area, and a whole lot of professional wrestlers. A lot of professional. In fact, um, my friend Barbara owns uh, Hulk Hogan's old house, the big mansion from the TV show. Really. Yeah, so so uh, when the guys fly down uh, next month, we're gonna stay there for ten days to do another songwriting session. So we'll nice. be at Hulk Hogan's house for. Uh, <laughs> that's fucking, that's awesome, brother. Do you, do you yeah, need to I, borrow the Do you need to borrow the belt? You have a belt. Oh, there it is. Look at that. <laughs> Such a fucking dork. I can't help. It. This is why I don't get to have sex. I remember. I was trick or treating. And I remember going up and knocking on this house and Greg the Hammer Valentine answers. I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, <laughs> Greg the Hammer Valentine. He lived like two minutes down the street from me. And and I knew it was one of the, you know, anyway, we knocked and we're like, you know, trick or treat candy. And he comes out. It was, it was fucking Greg the Hammer Valentine. Oh, shit. That is the greatest <laughs> trick or treating story ever. Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. Uh, the brand new record's called Rejoice in the Suffering. It is on Rat Pack Records. It is uh, the link for Rat Pack, and Todd's page is in the bio for this show. Um, look at this. Yeah, look at that cassette. I can't wait to get mine. It's still in the cellophane. Oh, look at that. I mean, how cool oh, is that? Oh, look at that. I cannot I mean, wait. I cannot wait me, for this. That cell. was the coolest. That was the coolest thing because that's how we listen to music before CDs yeah. came out. I, I'm gonna get another one that I'm actually gonna unwrap, but this one I'm not unwrapping. I love it. I yeah. love it. Just so you can, just so you can smell it. Remember the smell of a cassette? Yeah. You oh. Yeah, I haven't opened this, and I'm not going to. I'll, I have, I have like 18 more, and I'll, I'll open one of those. I still have like a Harmon Kardon. Uh, tape deck and receiver and stuff in my studio um it's not hooked up i just need to hook it up but it, it totally works and i'm gonna i want to play this thing yeah so i um, almost want to like get an old like lead sled you know i used to have an old 68 impala i almost want to get like an old c10 truck truck with a tape deck and just fucking put some six by nines in it like old school and just play cassettes Fuck yeah, dude. I, I, when I get my uh, 77 Bandit Trans Am uh, T-Tops Black, you know, yes. the, the, the right way, it <laughs> will have a cassette player in it and it will be yes. awesome. Yes. That's yes. all I got to fucking say. Um, and like I said, like I told you before we went on the air, this album is fucking amazing. I was literally when i put it on this afternoon i was listening to those cassettes that i showed you like van halen one and all this shit which i haven't listened to on on cassette since i was 16 and my 74 fucking uh firebird um i put this thing on and i'm like cleaning my room and i'm like holy fuck i mean i was lit i was literally floored and I, not that i expected it to be bad i just didn't expect it to be that good um, so props, man. Fucking congratulations. This this fucking record's Thank great. You. Thank you. Have, um, have you been sitting on these songs? Was this shit that you just ended up writing for the record when you decided, hey, I want to do uh, uh, your volume went down. No, I still hear them. His volume is lesser than it was before the break. Everything's right. 
Uh, anyways, yeah. Here, let me let me uh, turn it up on the on the gimmick. So there. Anyways. Test, testy one two. Nah, but you're good. Okay. You're good. Uh, I cranked so you. So the only song, the only song that was um, completed was the title track, and we did that several years ago. Um, and then we had like a few. We had a few riffs, uh, the Hell Bound and Down riff, um, a little bit of a track 10 apology uh, into the chorus. There was just like a few little snippets, but the only like song that was written was Rejoice in the Suffering. And then when the shutdown happened in March, um, I called Craig and I was like, hey, dude, this is this is it's going to be a while, I'm sure, until we're like playing again. This is a perfect opportunity to go every day, balls to the wall. Let's dig deep in, into songwriting. And we did that every single day. And so we wrote and recorded the whole album in like four months. Wow. And yeah, and that's it. And then Zeus, who does our producing and mixing and mastering for Queensryche, I called him and I knew he would do the, the mix and master on this record would just be perfect. And so he just nailed this thing. I mean, it sounds so clean and clear and everything is articulated the way that I wanted it to. And it's full sounding. It's not smashed, you know, it's got headroom and yeah. So we just, we just buckled down and did that. And we, we shot uh, a few videos. We still have a few more videos we're going to release throughout the year. Most nice. labels, you know, they'll put a record out and, you know, they'll release a, a lyric, couple lyric videos, a static, and then maybe two legit video videos. And then that's it. The record's done. They don't work it anymore to have a nice day. But we're going to work this the whole year with more videos. And I've got some other cool content that we're going to do. So, and the sales are, are killer. I mean, it charted five or six positions on Billboard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 done really, really, really well. So I, I'm super thankful that people are checking it out and digging it. And uh, I think it's going to have legs and grow and continue to 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 do that. And hopefully, it'll be considered a classic. I mean, I want this to be revered as like my resurrection, like how yeah, Halford yeah. Is, is. That's what I want this record to be. I don't know what happened on your end, but your volume just shot up to where it was before. So beautiful. Okay. Oh, we, we, okay. It's all working, man. It's well, all. You got the levels. You can see what it yep. is. So. Yep. Yep. Right. And I, uh, I just uh, lowered you back down to where you were, and we are fucking glorious. Okay. Um, when you went into this, because I know you said you play guitar, and obviously you play drums, like like Cotson when he records his shit, it's like it's he does it all himself because his thing is like, well, this is how I want it. And I know this is how it's going to come out. If I do it, was there part of you that wanted to go that route? Well, Craig and I did the whole thing together. So mm -hmm. just two people wrote and recorded everything you hear on the record. Um, and I, I remember I, I sent, uh, we sent a bundle to, uh, to Chuck Billy and Alex Skolnick from Testament and Alex uh, messaged me back and he's like, I, I can't believe just two guys did this whole thing. It yeah. sounds like a full band. And uh, that was a nice compliment, but I did the drums and vocals and Craig did the guitars and bass and some keyboards. And uh, we just think the same. So when he had a killer riff, I would hear it and I'd be like, that's the, mo that's the money right there. Let's, that's the riff, let's move on. We'll, we'll work on a pre-chorus and let's work on a, on a chorus. So there wasn't a lot of tearing things apart and reworking them a bunch of times. And tear, it was more like when I know something sounds good to my ears and then I've listened to it over the next several days and it still resonates with me, I'm like, cool, I, it's good for me. And this is for me, this record is for me. I'm good with it. I like it the way it is. Let's move on. And so we didn't waste a lot of time, but I mean, I, I can play guitar. I can't play anything like Craig can play. I mean, he's just a phenomenal guitar player, but 
I've got some other kind of melodic death black metal stuff that uh, demos that I've recorded where I played mm -hmm. everything on it. And uh, it sounds like a legit guitar player to me. But, you know, the soloing and stuff like that is, you know, he's in a whole nother level. Yeah. That's not the kind of player that I am. But uh, I, you know, it was the Henry Ford concept. Like, I want whatever's going to be the best for this music. And Craig was that guy for me. And, and we grew up together. And the first band I ever joined was his band as a drummer at 14 called Blackwell. And so I, I've been saying it in many interviews that this is the record that me and my best friend never got to make in our 20s. And that's what it's about. Yeah. Because we wanted, we wanted to make it. I mean, on yeah. a Friday night, everybody else would be out in high school, like going to some party. And, and you know, I was never a party guy. Craig mm -hmm. was never into that. And literally, like, our band from school, we would all get together at one of one of our houses and we would play guitar and we would look through Metal Edge magazine and we would wait for Headbangers Ball and Headbangers Ball would come on and we were like a gang and we were like, we're going to fucking, that's us. We're going to, we're yeah. going to, we're going to be like that. And, and, and we believed it in every cell of our being and just you know the the dice don't always roll your way and the right. band never got that break and i got a break and so now i have a good platform and so i said come on craig we're doing this and i could have called other very famous guitar players and done that whole name thing yeah and it was like no man this is this is this is me and you from 15, 16 years old into our early 20s, that's what this is. But now we're better, we're more mature, and I got a platform where people are all around the world can hear this. And uh, it's it's that that's what this is. This is me and my bro just doing the shit we like, and that's all that this is. Oh, dude, it that warms my heart, dude. That really warms my fucking heart, and that that brings you know like me back to my my high school days yeah. you know jamming with my friends in high school and and it's funny because the last time i played back home um my drummer and my bass player showed up to the show and it's like we got a picture for the first time together that's so cool <laughs> you know and it's oh my god dude that is like the greatest fucking thing ever it yeah. really is yeah. and i still i still talk to like I mean, we've had a couple bass players over the, those years and I'm still in touch with them. And, you know, they're just like, wow, dude, I can't believe watching you do this. Is, it's almost like they're vicariously living through my experience. Yeah. But for me, if I can't share that with the people that I know appreciate it, um, then it just, what's the point? Right. And so- so I have like, you know, some people come out of the woodwork. So, hey, dude, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there are there are those people that I try to hook up with tickets or passes and 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 they're 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 championing, you know, me because I'm a local guy that did good and that yeah. whole thing. But for me, I'm still. I'm still just that 18 year old metal head that, you know, wants to make it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, 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 I have, but I don't take it for granted. And, and uh, it's definitely been, it been an awesome experience, but again, going back to the, the, the point is, is when I met Crimson Glory, that was through my friend, Matt Laporte, who passed away. He was one of my very dear friends and he played for John Oliva's pain, the guy from sabotage, John mm -hmm. Oliva. Okay. Trans-Siberian orchestra, all that. And uh, we did, he gave me this little demo and I sang on it and it led introducing to these guys. My point is, is, is he opened up the doors for me and yeah. then the other doors kept opening. And for Craig, it's like, dude, you're too good. And you're 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 too nice of a guy and a good person to not 
have me pay it forward to you. And that's all that it was is, and, and if people, I'm hoping that it opens doors for other people to be like, wow, I love what he did on Todd's record. Hey, Craig, would you like to collaborate on something or we'll give you a guest awesome. solo spot. I want him to make those con connections and contacts like I have yeah. and, and open up that world for him. Cause, but again, this is, he used to live here in my house. Um, I bought this house when I was 21 years old. Holy I lived in the shit. same, I lived in the same little, I live in a bungalow. It's a two bedroom, one bath. And, and I, it's just a great little cozy house. And, uh, I have a man cave from hell in the back and uh, and that's as big as my house. And um, <laughs> he, he lived in the other spare bedroom and I had, I had a futon cause I was like, fuck a bed. I need drums to fit in here. <laughs> and so, so I had my drums and he had, he had the big Mesa boogies and we would just, we would just do our thing. We were the loud house on the street, you know, but yeah. there, there's a riff. It, actually, there's two riffs that we wrote in like 96, seven. And we always liked this. And I was like, hey, dude, you remember that? Uh, that's the intro to track six called Critical Cynic. Okay. And I said, we got to bring that into this record. That was so cool. So that's on it. And then there's a part in Vexed where it goes into this musical part, you know, uh, it's this kind of musical thing. We took that from what we wrote when we were like 22 or three, and we brought that into this record. So there's two pieces that we wrote and it's note for note, awesome. even the drums that I wrote where it's, you know, there's a backbeat on the snare. Everything exactly how I wrote my drums in 96 or whatever, I played exactly like we did it back then on this record. So, yeah, oh, dude. That's it, amazing. Yeah. Oh, my God. That, I'm, I'm tearing up. But it would be like, you know, one of your buddies that you yeah. were in a band making it and going, Izzy, let's fucking do this. That that's why I, I I'm I'm not lying. I have a tear in my eye right now. It's and that's not from laughing. That's from that this. To me, that's what it's. But that's what it's Fuck about, yeah, dude. That's what Fuck it's about. Yeah. Oh Otherwise, it's just like then. Then it's just like okay, I, I got a big name. Like I could have done another record with somebody else, and it probably would have been great in its own right. But it wouldn't have been this record. And Craig and I have a chemistry where I know where he's going to go next most yeah. of the time. He, and so it's, it, we both love the same types of metal and the things about those, saw, those styles that resonate. And we're like, you know what? We're going to write a metal record that encompasses a bunch of styles of metal that we love. And this is going to be a record where there's no confines, there's no restraint. You're gonna get brutal gutturals on one by one. You're gonna yes! get you're gonna get Halford style vocals on Pretenders and Overkill on Vanguards, and you're gonna get some of the Queensryche stuff on Vexed, and then you're gonna get and all of this shit of what I want to do with my voice. I just want to do whatever I want to do, and that's what this record is. And I think people really like that it gets to the next song, and they're like, "Well, goddamn, okay, that's that's a different." You don't know what you're going to get when you're hearing the record for the first time. Yeah. Oh, and, and that, look, that's that's the reaction I was having. And I was like, literally, I was like, well, well wait a minute. Did, did he have a guest singer on this song? Because I didn't, I mean, I didn't look at the Wikipedia until after when, yeah. I, when I had to write down the name of the record. Yeah. Just so I didn't sound like a fucking idiot and not sure. have it in front of me because I'm, I'm a brain fart, you know, I'm, a, I'm an airhead. Um, but yeah, it's like, there's parts like, is that Todd singing or is it, did he get, uh, you're answering yeah, all my questions. Else, yeah. 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 Somebody, uh, somebody texted me once. He goes, how do you have a duet with yourself? Because <laughs> <laughs> like on darkened majesty, it's like, you know, uh, that more shrill high singing. And then the chorus comes, 
colors fast and fade away. And it's more singy in the Queensryche yeah. style. And so you do have this, this thing, but when I listen to the record as an outsider, it doesn't sound like a bunch of different artists and bands as like a collab, a, a collage of mm -hmm. different, it sounds like one solid record. Yeah. Yeah. It just has a lot of different flavors of all kinds of metal from Pantera. You know, there's like Hellbound and Down has a cool Southern, you know, wow. It's got that Pantera groove. Then you've yeah, got yeah. Vanguards of the Don Wall that's like thrashy. Then you have Crossroads to Insanity, which is very clean and dark and atmospheric. And th so there's just a lot of things happening that make it a fun listen to me. And yeah. it's like shit that I miss hearing because now when I hear like heavy music, it's just a bunch of screaming. Yep. And I don't exactly. hear any, I don't hear real singers anymore. And if I do, it's like very power metal. And I'm not as huge of a fan of power metal like I used to be. I don't really don't listen to that much, that much anymore. And it's like, you know, kind of pirate metal and it's too happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, or or there's like a lot of orchestration or synthesizers and it's it's it doesn't have that rawness that this record has when I'm hearing more like mm -hmm. good singers. I, I like screaming once in a while, but I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear it the whole time. Well, look, and, and that's one of the reasons that I, uh, I asked you if you had been working on this for a long time is because, you know, because it is all over the fucking gamut. And I mean, like, like I told you, you know, like before we went on the air, you know, when I first put it on, I'm like, holy shit, I feel like I'm listening to fucking metal church in the eighties again. And it's beautiful. It's amazing. Cause that's the you shit know? I like. Yeah. And I, I just said, I don't care if it sounds dated. I mean, the production's modern, everything's modern, but I want that classic. Like, we're just going to write, this is just how we write. Okay. Yeah. Me and Craig write this way. So that's just what it ended up being. And, and we would send, you know, a new thing to Joe at the label and he'd be like, fuck yeah, you know, give me more of that. And then we would do another thing and another mm -hmm. thing. And he was just like, man, every song you're sending me, I, I, I really like. And he goes, I don't, I don't hear anyone putting out this. This, no. sounds, this, this doesn't sound like what anything else is being put out. So maybe, you know, maybe that's, you know, there, there is some old school stuff on here, but it doesn't sound right old. Right, it's just, right, it's right. Just shit that works, you know? Exactly. You can't beat good downstroke. Like, if you listen to, like, um, I don't know, Master of Puppets, you know, that down picking or, or, or uh, you know, Harvester of Sorrow or some mm -hmm. of these songs, you know, they're just like, that, that groove just works. And there's a lot of pocket on this record you're not hearing blast beats it's not right you know it's it's uh very musical and groovy yeah uh chat room really quick uh yeah. let's see um jason kane says me too that makes this album one thousand times better craig is killer uh laurie says todd is such a beautiful person oh, it looks like you have a new fan in australia he might want to hug you um Let's see, uh, what do we got? Uh, uh, Young Guns, Kyle Havens, love Todd, so embarrassed. I didn't know who he was when I met him and Dave Manichetti on the cruise in 2019. Well, you live and you learn. Uh, Sabrina says, uh, this album has not left my CD player since I got it. The other day, I just drove around for an hour because I wanted to get lost in the music and wow. escape for a while. Best therapy ever. Awesome. Um, uh, Jason goes out, how, Jason wants to know how the, sales are going if there's any updates on it sure so yeah because i get numbers that i don't think the public gets um <laughs> just to put things in perspective i hate streaming yeah um a lot of people love it it's it's simple it's convenient yada yada but for an artist 1500 streams equals one album sale 
Okay. Christ. Um, and so when Queensryche, for example, uh, or any of the bands from the, the, the days that we love and miss, uh, were selling records, they, they became platinum. For those that, that don't know what platinum is, that's a million records sold. Or gold is 500,000. Platinum is a million. Diamond is 10 million. They have not changed the certification standards for what is considered gold and platinum. It's still those numbers. Um, so only your really top, uh, your top uh, artists like Beyonce, Jay-Z, uh, probably what's her name billy eilish eilish yeah, whatever yeah. Okay. or that thing that does wet ass pussy or whatever uh. right okay stuff like you know stuff like that is there i don't know how many hard physical copies they're selling but they're but now billboard uh is doing what's what they're is called they're cumulative so they're combining um physical copy sales um, digital sales when you buy it on Amazon and then you get an MP3 download um, and then streams. Okay. And they also look at YouTube views and it's a crazy, it's, it's, it's a mess. But so just to put things into perspective, Queensryche, which is sold, I don't know the numbers between 20 and 30 million albums. Okay. Our last record, well, the 2013 record first week sales in the United States were about 13,000. Um, and we usually do about the same in Europe. Uh, I don't remember what condition human was. It was around probably 11 or 12, somewhere in there. The verdict uh, was like 8,200 um, first week, okay? Some people hear that and they're like, that's it? But again, it's, it is steadily on the decline where people right. are buying physical copy, okay? So we are most grateful to every one of you that hears this that actually purchases the real thing. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, as a solo artist, my first record, I had no idea. I Honestly, I was like, hey, if I can sell close to a thousand copies, I would be beyond thrilled with that. Okay. Yeah. Because, because even when, when a singer in a, in a big band puts a solo record out, the numbers are never anywhere close to what the band right. does anyway. Okay. Right. That's just a, a fact. So when the numbers came out, you know, we were looking at who did what. Um, and I remember like Shanker did 1600 the first week, the dead daisies did uh, 2300, um, you know, yada, yada. And so my numbers came out and I was like, okay, what are they? Cause they were released. It was, uh, 4,331 for first week. And I Damn. went, holy, holy shit. shit. These are like legit sales. I was like stoked for that. That's, that's a big accomplishment in that's today's huge. climate, especially huge. for, I mean, I was beating, in sales, I was doing more sales than, than, oh, put it this way, except whom I love yeah. did, um, did 4,800 approximately. So I was only about 500 copies less than yeah. the band except. And then each week, you know, they go down and they go down, they go down and it was right. 655. Right now I'm at about 6,300. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. It's That's amazing. And it's only been out, you know, what a month and a half or whatever yeah. it is. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And again, you know, we're still doing other videos and people are just learning now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're not in this world, you know, they're busy with life and right, right. finally pops up on their radar or, oh, here's a suggestion for you. And they don't know. And, you know, I don't have a name like Sting or Prince or, right. you know, it's just Todd Latore. So yeah. unless, if you don't know Queensryche, you don't probably know who I am. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm kind of, I was hopeful to branch. I mean, obviously to have the Queensryche audience uh, give this a try. That's my initial base, which is great. Uh, some people have said, oh, it's too heavy for me. And, and they didn't like, you know, it was a little much for them. That's fine. 
but I'm really hope was hoping to break out away. I mean, whatever Queensrÿche audience likes it, awesome. But I, I was really hoping to to gain new listeners in the thrash audience, right? Um, and and kind of expand my uh, demographic, if you will. And so a lot of people are even even in like the the black metal world or the death world that hear the song one by one, which is full blown gutturals, mm -hmm. you know. It, they're and uh, and I love doing stuff like that. So just showing, okay, I can do this, I can do that. I'm not just singing, you know, I don't believe in love or Jet City Woman. I right, can do. Right. I mean, there's still Queen of the Reich and some heavy heavier yeah. stuff, but. Um, yeah, it's the sales have been really, really great. And again, unless you're in the business, that might not sound like an impressive number to to you. Right. But it, it really is. Look, we're we're the underdog genre, mm -hmm. and 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 but but it's a loyal it's a loyal audience that loves you know heavy metal in particular. Yep. That um, I don't know that somebody who loves Justin Bieber, for example, now in 20 years are, are going to be, you know, love him that much. Maybe there are, I, I don't know, but I know that the rock world, it, it's, it's, um, it's so, they're so devout, especially when you travel abroad and go to Europe and you play festivals like Vakken where there's 80 plus thousand people and they are just diehards for this stuff. And so, um, I'm super thankful for people checking it out and I hope that they like it and they're, they're telling their friends and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a good contender and cut through a lot of the noise. We putting it out in February to me was perfect. And, and another thing um, Izzy, is that it was the release wasn't contingent on touring. Mm -hmm. So a lot of bands, they want to release the record right when the tour starts. Right. I didn't have that that holding me up. And I was like, you know what? We're gonna put it out. Let's let the election get over with. And then we'll put it out in February. I can run it the whole year. It'll still be this year's album for a long time through this whole year. And uh, and then by the time, if there's ever pockets of time when Queen's Rikes down and touring is safe and, and it's open, I'm gonna go play some shows on this stuff. And what'll be great about it is by the time I ever do that, people are going to know the songs. Right. Absolutely. Well, and look, and that's what I was going to say about, I mean, thank God, thank you to Larry Moran and all, all the great fucking fans on the Monsters of Rock Cruise, because I mean, those, those motherfuckers are loyal as hell, yeah. you know, and, and that, and that's, I mean, that's a huge part of your fucking audience. I mean, shit. A couple of years ago, I got repoed and the the cruise fans fucking bailed me out i mean that's how loyal wow. these fucking people are they're and very loyal yeah so so thankful to be able to be part of that you know yeah yeah there are very loyal uh very loyal people that you know you would think like okay, like our age and older and you're like but you know what you're <laughs> people will say things like uh you know the the assholes out there they'll say oh queen's a, a nostalgia band or they're a legacy band and you know what if you're a band back then and you're starting out and you say oh well, where are they being five years and then you've been there five years and then you're there in 10 years and they yep. say well where are they going to be here 10 years from now and then you're 10 years from now at what point does that's like what you want is that longevity you've stood the test of time once you've stood the test of time then people will be like oh you know they're they're a, a, a nostalgia band but you know what we sell memories exactly we sell, me we sell exactly. memories and and, exactly. and and but we still but we still write and create new records and a mm -hmm. lot of people will say to us hey we love take hold of the flame we love jet city woman and eyes of a stranger and empire but we've heard these songs for 30 years can you put some newer stuff into the set they want to hear the new stuff and uh i mean there's some bands that if they never write a new song i i'm fine with
but but if a band like Slayer puts a new album, I want to hear it. Right, right. But well, there's and that's, other bands. Uh, look, know, Todd, if, and that hold on. I mean that, and that's that's a that's a different mentality because you know how it is. A lot of time, bands will play that new song, and that's the I gotta throw a whiz, I gotta get a beer. Break. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, and. and but that well, that even goes back to the seventies. Zeppelin used to fuck, like they would open with Cashmere before the record came out, and people would go get fucking beers because they didn't know the song. This is a true story. Uh, there's yeah, been people wow. that talked about it, you know. But you know what? It's like it's like okay, how do you how do you pacify? You're never going to please everyone, right? Right. So absolutely. If you just if you just play all the popular songs. Then the people are like, wow, I guess you don't believe in your new music because you're not playing any of, of it. Right. Right. And so we're like, no, we want to play a handful of new songs and we're going to give you deep cuts and we're going to play stuff off the first five or six records, too. Right. And so, you know, that that big hit that you want to hear, it's probably coming later. But, w you know, we are also not just resting on the laurels of the past we are promoting new music and we yeah. put a lot into that so it, but you know what there is no shame in playing a song that takes you back to that sweet time in your car with your first girlfriend or boyfriend mm -hmm. and and you're hanging with your buddies and you had time was on your side and life was simpler and it was just it that's such a good feeling it's like when you smell something and it connects yep, in absolutely. your brain and and it takes you right back to a time music does the same thing so i have no shame in someone saying oh they're they're a nostalgia well fucking nostalgia is amazing and without mm -hmm. it then memories mean jack shit so we sell memories and we also give you new stuff and not a lot of bands can say that. Yep. And so, look, it, it, look, it brings me back to, I mean, the, that stack of cassettes that I got today, Van Halen one sitting at Lake George in my fucking 74 maroon fire chicken, my very first fucking car listening to fucking Van Halen one on cassette. You know, just yeah. watching people walk, watching the girls and just everybody bullshitting and sitting in my car, listening to fucking Van Halen one. That's so awesome. That's, that's what it's all. Dude, about. I, I was dry. I was driving in the car the other day and I heard the song. Um, when you close your eyes. Oh yeah. You I dream, dream, dream about me. And I was yep. like, and then it goes, you know, the big, yeah. and I was like, Oh God, it just, it was like, yes, you know? Yeah. It brought me right into that. And, and, you know, if I hear the, the beginning of lay it down, it's like, oh, here we go. Or, or a yeah. uh, uh, slip of the lip. I, I hear certain riffs, or if you hear the beginning of, you know, Oh yeah, I hear that. You know, yeah. that baseline. It doesn't get any better than that. So, to me, that's that just gives it gives you goosebumps. It does. It's like like every time that I hear Meatloaf and I hear White Snake and I hear Steve Miller, um, oh, I, Steve it, Miller, it yeah. brings me it brings me back to fuck. Yeah, yeah. Up. We so we like in high school. You know, all we did was cruise division and go to city billiards and sitting there and fucking smoke cigarettes and play the jukebox. And that's all yes. it was was fucking meatloaf and fucking white snake and fucking Steve Miller. And then I hear fucking ACDC and it, and Skinner. And it brings me to the fucking uh, bonfire parties, listening yeah. to the greatest hits with Skinner, Skinner's inners and fucking back in black. And, oh, and yeah, like it's it, like you said, it's nostalgia and it's nostalgia is not a bad thing. It's Everybody's like, you're thing. old. Fuck that dude. That brings us back somewhere. Fuck like going back to the beginning of the show. Every time I hear the fucking twist, I picture myself in fifth grade on that stage i remember chubby pulling me up and it, uh, body bouncer came over and helped him 
pull me up and you know doing the twist and my mom worked there she she was side stage she took a picture but there was a fat lady in front of her and back in the 80s you know what a fat lady was not like they're fat now like me but it so she couldn't see me but did it did that it brings me yeah, back, it brings you back. Oh, dude if you God. i listen to songs like um uh straight from the heart Tell me we can make one more stop. Yeah. No, I'll never know. Oh, you heard that old so Brian good. Adams, or I'll hear like, you know, do 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 slipping, slipping. And you hear that, yeah. you know, that yeah. trippy sound or like, uh, what's the song? Uh, She's just 16 years old. Leave her alone. <laughs> you know, I yeah. hear that and I'm like, oh man, that's that's so good songwriting. So yeah, yeah, the nostalgia stuff, but the reason why we went into the I went into this whole thing here is the people that go on those cruises, they feel that too. Yep. And they get to see, okay, I'm not the original guy, but they yeah. get to hear those songs and they get to re- they get to feel young again. Yep. And I mean, what it's all about doesn't want to feel young again. It's our escape. Totally. It really it's is. our therapy, dude. Mm -hmm. And you know? uh, with this record, watch this. This is how good I am. And with this record, Rejoice in the Suffering, which you can get on Rat Pack Records. Tell them what she's won, it, Harvey. It, bring, it brings you back to that time in your life when you're reaching for the stars while keeping your feet on the ground ah because yeah, yeah. you know there, there's some metal that i listen to and it's like really dark and and it it's like a different headspace yeah. and then there's other stuff that's that's metal that gets me that's like happy angry like you know what i yeah it's not like an oxymoron but it's like that that fight right that fuck yeah and like that's how i hear when i hear like painkiller right yeah like that kind of vibe the songs on this record make me feel like that yeah. they make me feel like yeah you know this is this is like a good heaviness it's not like depressing heavy this right. is like, you know want to get in a pit and beat the fuck out of someone happy exactly todd dude this is a fucking blast <laughs> i'm yeah, glad man. we finally got to do this one-on-one -on -one. i've been bugging you for how many fucking years I mean, don't. and you know what? I'll, I'll, I'm gonna send you that 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 shirt, and uh, and and I hope that you that you, you get the get the cassette soon. And, and dig I can't that. wait. I can't Thanks wait. for like promoting the record and yeah. giving me the love on your platform. And uh, you know, I hope to see you again in the near future too, man. You know, I don't, I don't. Uh, it's you know touch and go right now yeah, i don't know no, if you're, are you going to be on the kiss cruise are you doing that no 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 uh, that's uh that's out that's out of my range of territories uh oh, okay. going okay. back to old going back to old school wrestling days that's uh that's not my territory that's another territory you know okay uh, <laughs> so uh but yeah but dude I, I look i really appreciate it i mean fuck it we we go back a couple years. I mean, you judge the several the, years now. Several years, yeah. I mean, you judge the gong show. And the fact that you can sing like you do. I, mean, I don't know if you still smoke or not, but fucking, we're out there puffing heaters, and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, you smoke? Holy fuck! Pavarotti smoked two or three packs a day. You yeah. know, it's it, it. Dio Dio smoked really. Um, I know he smoked weed. Um, uh you know, Fabio Leone, who's an awesome singer, that guy, you know, he smokes a lot. I mean, whatever, dude. Yeah, man. Fucking life's too short. Enjoy a fucking, enjoy a fucking cowboy kill. I don't it. drink. I've never been drunk in my life. Ever. Really? Dude, I've never been drunk. You've consumed more alcohol on this show than I ever have in my uh, life. Uh, Gene, Gene Simmons is very proud of you. I've never, I've never even smoked weed. I've never tried any drugs other than nicotine. And, um, you know, because I, I have an addictive personality. Oh, I and, know. And, I, and I, I, know, know. I know that if I tried, uh, if I tried something that I really liked, I would be, I would be a junkie. Like, yeah, stay, look, so stay away from the booze because it starts out with a couple beers. 
Then all of a sudden you turn into Sebastian Bach. Dude, there was Jack Daniels and cocaine. <laughs> Todd Latore, dude, thank you so much. Uh, people want to find you on social? Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah. So I have a, a Facebook page. It's an artist page. It's, it's, I don't know if it's Todd Latore official or official Todd Latore, but you can find me there. I have a Twitter page as well. Um, I do not have Instagram. I'm still like holding out and detesting it. And I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> hey, it's not like a Snapchat. I know, but I, so for those are the two, but I, <laughs> I, on, I have a new website. It's very simple. It's toddlatory.com. And I have available merch. I have some really cool, unique bundles with signed album flats. You can get the cassette. I have t-shirts. Um, I've already seen like a few companies bootlegging my shirts, which really fucking pisses me off. So right. if you want to go get official, the only place you can get my legit merch is off my website. Click the shop tab. It'll be district lines. Um, and you can get in the shirts that I have are like, re, you'll see when I send you the shirt. I can't it's wait, super, dude. I can't it's wait. It's super soft. It's not some really stiff gilded shirt. You're never going to want to wear. Um, All right, yeah, you're so a, that's you're it. A, you're getting a Jersey tee, by the way. So you're getting one oh, of those. Right on. Perfect. I, black sleeves, white front and the old school seventies font. It just says another effing podcast. Perfect. I will proudly wear it. Fucking love it. Awesome. All right, hold on. Uh, hold on really quick. We'll say goodbye off the air. Let me hit the outro music. Thank you, everybody, for checking in. Uh, look, Jennifer says, great interview. Uh, Bond Star, in amazing interview. Thank you. Uh, Lori, everybody's freaking out the fact that you smoke and sing like that. <laughs> it's just, it's just fucking Robin Zander, fucking metal style. God bless them. Uh, Scotty Strickland says it's been an awesome show thank you guys thank you guys make sure you go to buy his stuff go buy his stuff and yes Lori it is available on vinyl you can get it on actually colored vinyl my it's white limited my, white my record player does not like colored vinyl which is one of the reasons I got the cassette but I will order the colored vinyl as well just so I can have it and play it once I get a new it's record a double player. It's a double vinyl, and you can get it. You can get the, the double, just the vinyl through Rat Pack Records. But yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, so next week, Joel Hoekstra working on one more guest as well. And uh, make sure you hit up all the social at Real Lizzie Presley all the way across for our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and of course the Metal Edge uh, uh, Facebook page, Metal Edge Magazine. Hit it all up. My name's Lizzie Presley. We'll see you next week. And in the words of Ozzy Osbourne. I do love you all. Rockin' 101, 30 years of rockin'. It is the Miller Auto Plaza free ride. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the short bus. I thought it was supposed to just be Scott Rockenfield, the drummer of Queensryche, but apparently I guess we got the whole band. Yeah, that's because that's because we all like to say stuff. Well, that's good. So, that's good. they found out, that's the deal. But anyway, listen, man, thanks for having us on the show today, and uh, we're looking forward to the gig this weekend. Oh, uh, we're... I'm, personally looking forward to it too because uh, the queen's right that i'm a fan of is the old stuff and from what i hear with todd you're doing a lot of the old stuff that's, that's correct man we're, we're really looking at, um you know to dig deep into our past and that's what we've been working on is you know bringing back the old classics that uh you know our fans wanted to hear for a long time and that um you know we just haven't presented the way we wanted to uh it for a long time so it's been a lot of fun for us to revisit this stuff and uh i think the fans are going to be in for a real treat you know we're just it's it's bringing the metal back to our queens right fans and that's what we're going to do this weekend and uh we just hope everybody has a good time that is what i like to hear and i know that's what everybody else wants to hear too how have you done any gigs as queens right now with todd no this is actually the first official launch of the new queens right with uh todd fronting with us um we did a couple preliminary gigs back in june here mm -hmm. in seattle just a, a quick throw together we did under the moniker of rising west and uh it was so highly uh accepted by our fans and the response was just so great that uh I think this weekend is just going to be a huge unveiling of us with Todd and, you know, just this ripping set list that we're putting together. Um, so, no, this is a whole unique, you know, first-time situation coming this weekend. 
that's awesome and that that's really cool that we get the first one something to be proud of so to speak I, I know it's a ways off now but have you guys thought about new material todd or is that just something you're just going to let happen if it happens uh yeah actually we're writing material every day we've got a lot of stuff in the works and uh everybody kind of writes individually and then collectively and you know every single day we're creating new stuff so it's very exciting is this todd that i'm hearing right now Todd, yeah, I, I thought you said Todd, so here I am. Oh, <laughs> I was just talking generally, so yes, that was Todd Latore, correct? This is Todd, yes. All right, cool. I just want to make sure I got your last name right. Um, this yeah. is for anybody. Um, on Mind Crime 2, you guys got to work with Ronnie James Dio. Uh, talk about that experience. Hey, Izzy, this is Michael. Yeah, Ronnie has worked with Queensryche uh, over the years and has, I mean, we really miss him first and beforehand, but um, one of the first tours we did was with, with Ronnie, and uh, he's always been there, and he was always there to support us, and uh, uh, it was just a, a great opportunity that he was available to uh, help enhance uh, that song on that Mind Crime 2 record. And he actually got to do one show live with you guys, correct? Yes, that was in uh, Los Angeles, and that was definitely a, a memorable event for uh, Queensryche fans. Yeah, you know, what What can you say? It's Ronnie. Exactly. Say, you know, I mean, as Michael was saying, you know, we've had a long history with uh, with him and his band mates, for that matter. And, uh, yeah, what a, what a what a unfortunate loss for the music world, but what an inspiration. And I think he still continues to be an inspiration to people all around the world, both as a person and, you know, as an artist. And, uh you know, we were fortunate to have all those experiences with him, probably more than some people have. So we always take it with a grain of salt, and he taught us a lot, and uh, he was a lot of fun to hang out with. And that voice, that voice yeah, is just you insane. Can't, can't really say no to that voice, can you? Exactly. Well, it's funny because you hear some of his stuff from the 60s when it was like Ronnie and the Redcoats and uh, Ronnie Deal and the Prophets or whatever, and it sounded it was like that poppy you know, 60s style stuff, but you could still hear the voice. Yeah, you can't you can't really say no to a good voice. It just pokes through and does its thing. And he was a great, talented, talented guy. So you know, those are the fortunate things that we've been able to surround ourselves with through the years. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think uh, there's some interesting opportunities that are opening up for us now that we've got Todd in the band with us and this kind of new resurgence of Queensrÿche going on and the material that we're writing and the the support from the fans has been just crazy. And, uh, you know, we've got uh, interest from some producers that are coming down the line. Nice. Um, you know, just, you know, a lot of peer support from other bands and people mm -hmm. that we've known. So, you know, it's, it's a great love thing going on for us. Uh, we recently just launched a brand new website, which is still under construction, but there's a, a placeholder in place for it. And the day we launched it, the fans just went crazy nice. and have uh, jumped onto it and are supporting everything. Uh, it's queensrikeofficial.com, by the way, is the new website. Okay. So, you know, listen, it's all good, man. We just can't complain, and we're just really excited about coming into town and playing the show this weekend and seeing our fans and hanging out with some other great artists and, you know, moving on to the next one after that. Here's a question. Um, we were doing trivia questions to get people registered for Party Like a Rockstar, where we bring people back on the Saturday night, and I could not find the answer to this question because I wanted to ask it. Who killed Sister Mary? You did. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> and, and you didn't even know it. Oh, that uh, doesn't help. Listen, we, you know, we've been asked that so many times, and the generic answer is if we tell you, we have to kill you. Ah. Uh... All and, right. Uh, you know, listen, there's an easy answer, and it's been out there for so long, I'm surprised that you couldn't Wikipedia or something and find it. it didn't... Mary killed herself. So it was suicide? Yes. All right. Correct. All right, good. That Now I know, and knowing is half the battle. All right, now I have a bunch of drummer <laughs> geek questions for you because I thought I was just talking to you, so... Um... What kind of drummers do you look up to? Who do you, you know, who do you like? And not really the stupid influence question, but, uh, you know, old school, new school, uh... What kind of drummers are you a fan of? You know, the current 
one that I'm looking up to the most is sitting in the room with me. It's Todd. Because <laughs> uh, every day, he's, he's got like 25 years under his belt as a drummer. I don't know if a lot of people know that or not, but I, I did didn't. Not. But every damn day at rehearsal, he sits behind my drum kit when I go use the bathroom. <laughs> and I come back in, and he's playing our songs and singing them at the same time. And I'm tired oh, wow. of it. He's showing me up, but... No, listen, uh, that's a great thing, actually, that he's able to do that because we can teach each other something mm -hmm. for sure. Um, you know, my inspirations way back in the early days were bands like Rush and early Van Halen, right. and, you know, Iron Maiden, and, uh, you know, kind of more along the progressive musical um, challenging type of acts that right. uh, that really got me inspired. And that, even to this day, those bands still inspire me and you know, I bought the new Rush record recently. Neil has always been a huge inspiration. And, uh, you know, just all that. You know, I think anybody that kind of tries to push the musical envelope has been something that has, you know, really been, you know, inspiring to me. And so I kind of, you know, still to this day listen to that type of stuff. Um, a drummer friend of mine wanted me to ask this to you. His name is Duff, and I'm sure you're going to have the pleasure of meeting him this weekend. Uh, and trust me, you won't forget him. Um he wants to know what makes your sound your sound. Wow. You know, that's a funny thing because probably the easiest answer is just me. Um, okay. And I say that because it's like, you know, people ask, is it because of the way, what type of drums you play or your tuning or your heads? And mm -hmm. I think all of that is absolutely relative to a point. But, you know, during sound check, I've got my kid up there that's tuned and everything for me, but when my crew gets up to do sound check or do uh, all the testing for us, it never sounds the same. Right. And I really do think that it's up to the physical person. You know, it's how I hit it or how, you know, you know, it is. It's all about the technique and, mm -hmm. the, you know, the physical just approach to it, I think. And I think that's a lot of what I do, you know. It just has become part of my sound and... And then I've just tailored that through the years by the way I tune. It helps me sound the way I want to sound. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's kind of a big picture thing. But uh, that's my generic answer to that one as well. Well, it's better than no answer at all. And then his second <laughs> part of his question is, um, how do you compare, compare your playing in the studio to how you pull it off live? Well, whenever we do something in the studio, I have to learn it to play it live. Right. And, uh, once, I, once I achieve that goal... Um, you know, it's actually p pretty much the same. What I okay. do in the studio, I mean, if people come and see us live, I, I'm, I'm a pretty animated, physical type of drummer. Right. I actually do that in the studio as well. I think it's just part of what I do. Um, and, you know, so I, I, I try to keep them, you know, I think somewhat similar. That way it's easier for me not to have to you know, think two different ways. I just approach the drums. When I sit down, I just do what I do, whether it's in the studio or live, and so far, it's worked for me after 30 years. Well, and you know, that's the thing, especially with what you guys do. You pull it off live very well, and it's that's not an easy task, so to speak. Um, Scott and everybody in Queensryche, thank you guys so much. Um, so much. So look forward to the show on Saturday night. Look forward to shaking your hands and maybe having a beer. Um, you want to pimp the website one more time? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, www queensrikeofficial.com and uh, there's a mailing list that uh, our fans and stuff can get on and uh, soon enough we'll have the rest of the website complete uh, we're working on it now so it's a, it's a lot of motion going on these right. days great stuff, listen, thank you as well we are very excited about the show this weekend it's going to be a lot of fun we're playing some great material that our fans are really going to enjoy and we're really looking forward to seeing everybody and we will definitely take you up on that beer that you're offering to buy for all of us. That is what I like to hear. And as I'm going out, give me a song. Which one do you guys want to hear? The Needle Lies. All right, you got it. Nice.